Welcome to another cross training tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to actually work an example problem just to see how we can use this template. So the very first thing that I did was I kind of set up a little demo course here. And all I did was just right click on this and choose copy and then right click here and choose paste. And then I renamed it to this course name here. And then inside of here, we should see our template engineering paper and then that ME513 one that we made that was customized to be course specific. So in the background, that's what I have open right now. And what I'm going to do is inside of practice problems, I'm actually going to make a folder. And I'm going to call this 03 evaluating properties. Because what I'm going to do is work a chapter three type of problem. And chapter three is called evaluating properties. And I usually don't put the word chapter in front of my zero three. I just kind of generally know myself that this is referring to chapter three. And then when I'm done working the problem, I'm going to actually export it. And when I export it, I'm going to stick it inside of this folder here. So taking a look at a finished out course, what that might look like, you know, towards the end of the semester or halfway through the semester. So inside of my practice problems folder, you'll see that I have a chapter one, two, three, four, five, six, and a 12. Seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 were skipped in this course. And then you can see here that I have a Photoshop file for basically each of these chapters. And for me, I just chose to break it down that way. If it was any bigger, the file was too large for me to kind of transport back and forth between home and work. The other thing I have here are some images. So maybe there were some images that I inserted in here. And then because I was moving the file back and forth, I was creating backups. So obviously when I took the file to work, there were some changes that were done to it. So when I came home, I didn't overwrite the old file. I just dated it and then dropped it inside of this backup folder. And I would always do this just in case, you know, there's something there that I need to revert back to. I can go back into the backup folder and grab it. So you can see here about chapter four-ish is when I picked up a new job. So that's when I needed to start doing that. All right, so now we're gonna go back over here to our Photoshop document that I have open from that folder. And the very first thing that I'm gonna do is take this template problem, right click on it and choose duplicate group. And then in here, I'm going to name it after the problem that I'm going to work. So what I'm actually going to work is an exam two, problem number three. And there's only four problems on exam, so I might just do like two. So I'm going to call it an E2-3. And when I expand this, I have everything already set up here. So I don't need to go through and create any layers or anything because I already did that from last step. So I do need to give this a page number and what I might do instead is just go with problem number. And in fact, I might just stick with page number just so I don't have to change my total page numbers. So we're gonna pretend like maybe what I need to submit is only two pages long and we're on page one. So I'm gonna, where it says page number, I'm gonna do a page one. So I'm zoomed in all the way here. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because this is a little bit too large for me. I think it's still a little bit too big. That's about the right size for me. And I'm gonna start with writing the problem. So this is problem number three. And I personally like to box it in. Some people prefer to circle it or do nothing with it. And the problem starts out with a piston. So I'm gonna go ahead and just write out the problem here.
Now that I have my problem written here, the next thing that I need to do is the data visualization component. So this is where I'm going to actually read through the problem again and try to draw a diagram of it. And I know there's a lot of setting the state going on involved in here, so I'm definitely going to make a graph. And I'm also going to have a table, mostly because that's just how I personally like to kind of see the problem. It probably has to do a lot with the fact that I do a lot of work with GIS. So I'm used to working with attribute tables. So I like to see tables and it helps me to visualize the data a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. So these are basically my givens that I've kind of harvested out of the problem statement. And now I actually need to go through and kind of fill in the in-between parts, stuff that's kind of implied that you may not at first get from reading the problem statement. And before I continue with that, I want to talk a little bit about how I have my table set up here. So you might be wondering, well, do it, does it, does things need to be listed in this specific way? And for me personally, I list them this way because it helps me to remember certain things. So for example, I know with like specific volume, there's going to be a mass and a volume relationship going on. So I tend to group these together in my table. And then with um, volumes and pressures, I know that there is going to be like a work type of relationship going on. And then temperature is also involved. So I just kind of put it here in the middle with um, internal energy. And this internal energy, heat transfer and work part, is very closely related to um, the first law of thermodynamics. So I tend to want to group this together over here on the end. So again, this is just how I personally like to organize my table. You can do yours any way that you want. Over here on the far left side, I like to list my states. So this is state one, this is state two, and this is state three. And right next to my state, I mean, if I know this information, I like to write down the state or if it's like a saturated vapor or a superheated vapor or if it's a liquid vapor or whatever. I like to have that information here in the table. So let me go back and look at this problem again. Seam loses to the surrounding piston, moves down, stops cylinder. And this is saturated liquid water. So I thought I had a mistake in here. So let me go in here and fix this. This should be saturated liquid. So the first thing, um, the next thing I need to do is write down my assumptions. So I'm just going to go to the step two. Because my assumptions is going to help me fill in this table here. And again, you know, these aren't really steps. It's more like phases of the problem. You're going to jump back and forth. I just call them steps because at the time I couldn't think of a more creative name. So this is my engineering model. This is what the book calls it. And then we also state our assumptions here. So the first one up here, just reading the problem, it says that it's a piston cylinder device. Um, we know that there's going to be some boundary work going on. We know that this is a closed system. And what that is basically going to mean for me, going back to look at my tables, is that all this mass is going to be equal to each other. The mass is not going to change with state changes since we are a closed system. The other thing that I can kind of see that I can do right now is find the specific volume. So let's go back and look at our problem statement again. I think we have enough information to do that. 
and we can do that with state one so we can find one piece of the information with state one so here we, we see the temperature is 0.75 and I'm gonna use my graph to help me set the state so just zooming out a little bit another thing that I notice is that I have this huge white space here that's being wasted and if this problem is particularly long it could spill over to two pages and I don't want that to happen so I'm gonna click on my graph layer and you notice how I have my graph layer with my table layer so that's kind of like a mistake that I made here so again I can fix this so I'll just grab my graph control X and then control V to paste and then move my graph and then merge it with the uh, so I'm gonna merge my table that I cut off the graph layer so what I did is I ended up drawing my table on my graph layer or at least part of my table on my graph layer so I can cut it out and paste it into my tables layer cutting and pasting things in this program is extremely useful because it means you never have to rewrite anything again and <clears throat> if you hop into want to experiment with a solution you could all you have to do is just create a new layer you don't have to get a new sheet of paper or anything you just start a new layer and then go down that path and see if it works for you and if it doesn't work for you then you know that that's probably not the way to go you can just turn that layer off and go back to the previous path that you were trying okay you got to think about these kind of things this is where thermo gets you because you got to think where do i go you're going to go down some dead ends and it's okay to go down some dead ends there may be a person down there that's beating you up and it's okay just run run and scream the other way and then say why do i know where do i know i know mass is constant and then see what i can do with that okay you're gonna have to do those kind of things on these kind of problems so again this is extremely helpful in being able to experiment so I've pretty much rearranged my layout that way I can get things to fit on one sheet of paper I'm gonna slide my engineering model up now so what I'm gonna do now is just kinda of go through and set the state and populate the table and continue filling out my engineering model and assumptions With the information that I have right now, I have enough information to um, look to solve for the work that's happening between process one and two. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for the work that's occurring between process one and two.
So I just finished solving this problem and the very last thing that I need to do is to write out the solution in statement form and box it in. So there's a couple ways that I can do that and I'm actually rel relatively lazy so what I'm going to do is just borrow this text from over here. So I'm going to go to my problem layer, go to my select tool, I'm going to select all of this, type control C and then just click on my solutions layer and type control V. So now this resides on my solution layer, at least a copy of it does. While I still have the solutions layer selected, I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to drag this all the way down here to the bottom part of my paper. So the final pressure and quality, if it's a liquid vapor mixture, probably need the second line to write that. So I'm going to grab this. Control X and Control V. We notice here in my layers list, now I have a layer one, so all the stuff that I just pasted is on that layer one. So I'll move it down here. Boundary work, there's enough room to write the solution. The amount of heat transfer when the piston first hits the stop. I don't have enough room on the end to write the solution, so I'm going to repeat procedure and move D down. Alright, so that looks pretty good. And I'm going to merge all of these layers together once I get things nice and lined up. I'm going to move it as far over to the left as I can. Alright, now I'm going to drag layer 1 underneath the solution layer and layer 2 under the solution layer. Select them all using my shift key. I'm going to right click and choose merge layers. Now I'm going to go ahead and write in my solution. So the final um, state pressure. Final state pressure and quality if it's a liquid vapor mixture. I'm going to say is on the end over here. I'm going to write 15.54 bars. And the final pressure or temperature, if it is a liquid vapor mixture, is 15.54 bars and 0.06%. The boundary work, so that's something that we haven't done. So the boundary work is basically um, the total of work that was done. So let's go to our table layer and take a look. Just sum up the amount of work that was done here. So this is relatively easy because the work at 2 and 3 was 0 since the stopper couldn't move. So I'm going to write W net and this equals negative 41.66 kilojoules. So going back to my solutions layer it's 41.66, so I need to indicate um, direction. Negative gives a direction. So the boundary work done to the system is, and what did we say that was? 41.66 and that was in kilojoules. Alright, the next one, the amount of heat transfer when the piston first hits the stop. So the amount of work done. So between state 1 and 2 it, the piston is moving from here down to the stop and then from state 2 to 3 it obviously can't move because it's hit the stopper so between state 2 and 3 is where it's stuck on the stopper so they're wanting to know the heat transfer between 1 and 2 so between 1 and 2 that's going to be our 278.87 so we can say the amount of heat transfer when the piston first hits the stop is 278 kilojoules 
And we can say that it's done to the environment. Kilojoules to environment. And I believe up here, I think I have an error. So going back to our table, this is supposed to be negative. All right, the total heat transfer, going back to solutions layer, total heat transfer is basically gonna be this Q net. So we're just gonna sum all this up. And both of these values are negative, so it's going to the environment. So all we need to do is pull out our calculator and I get a 307.75 on my calculator. 307.75 kilojoules. And this value is negative. So that's heat being transferred um, out of the system. 307.75. So I'm gonna go back to, I guess I might have written that on my solutions layer. Um, the total amount of heat transfer to the environment is zero seven point seven five kilojoules. All right, the next thing I need to do is just box in my solution. So I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole thing. And I'm just gonna check something here. Yeah, I think I wrote that on the wrong layer. It's not a big deal. I can just grab it. Oh, there was just a control X and a control V. And that goes to my table layer. All right, I'm gonna box in my solution now, make sure I have my solutions layer selected. And there's a couple ways that I can box it in. I could draw a box or I could manually do one with the brush tool. I'll just use the brush tool. I'm just gonna make my window bigger so I can see the whole thing. So I'm just going to give it one last look over. I just want to make sure I don't have any negatives in front of the numbers. So you're not supposed to have a negative in front of the number. You either say that it's work is being um, done to the system or the system is doing work or heat is transferring out or in instead of using um, a positive negative number in your solution. So I've done that. So everything here looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. And before I do, I just want to zoom out so that you can see the end product, what it looks like. So once I'm done completing a problem, the next thing that I need to do is actually populate in this top part here because what I need to do is actually export this. And I'm gonna export this as a JPEG. And once it is a JPEG, I can pretty much do anything I wanna do with it. So there are some settings that I want you to see when you export it as a JPEG so you don't degrade the quality of your work here. So we're going to pretend that the due date is filled in and we're going to pretend that we put a homework number up here and this is all good to go and it's ready to be exported. So if you're ready to export it, you just go up to this file and you go to save as. And we're going to pretend that it's an actual assignment. So maybe we'll say that it's, I don't know, 03, assignment number 3, underscore, got my caps lock on, evaluating properties. And then we'll stick it inside of there. Notice right now it has kind of a, you know, a different extension. We actually want this to be a JPEG extension. And I'm gonna leave the ME513 part in the front and then I might add things, something like um, 
uh, 0, 3, since this was homework number 3, maybe I'll add the HW in the front so we know what that's in reference to. And then I'm going to call it Evaluating Properties. Usually what I put in here is a description of what this homework encompasses. So let's just say that I need to study for the exam and maybe I don't feel comfortable with setting the state or doing triple interpolation. If I name this file in such a way where, you know, it can give me a hint, then I know, you know, as I'm browsing through my files that this one is going to have a triple interpolation thing inside of there. And then later when I'm studying for exam, I can pull this up. So towards the front, I usually like to put my name in here, especially if I'm going to do digital submissions. So I usually use my last name and then the first letter, the first um, letter of my first and my middle name is sticking in there. And this looks good. And since I'm probably, you know, in most cases you have more than one homework, more than one page of homework, I might name at the very end, put 01 indicating that this is page one and then click save. This window here is pretty important. So by default, it may be something like this. And if you save it as this, you're going to lose some resolution here. So if you have any subscripts, you know, like this one over here by the V1 and this two by the V2, you're going to lose that. And the grader may ding you on this thing not being very readable. So you like over here, we have a superscript of negative three. So make sure you crank it all the way up to the right. It does make the file a little bit bigger, but it does make the file readable. So from here, I'll go ahead and click OK. And let's take a look at what came out of there. And I'm going to take a look in here. I believe I saved it in here under assignments. I'm just going to right click on this and go to open with, find something that will open it like photo, some windows thing, make the window bigger just so that we can have a look at what we have here. Use the zoom tool so you can see that that came in pretty clean and we can also read a lot of the uh, superscripts and the subscripts if we had not saved at max quality this would be very pixelated it would look like something we're viewing from a very old television set so that looks pretty good and that concludes this tutorial